Okay, so we can start. Um, let's see that someone. Yes, okay, so we can start. Um, uh, welcome everybody for the seminar for the webinar of today. Uh, the speaker of today is uh, Mikhail Gorokovsky, uh, and uh, the topic he's going to speak about is statistical models of a droplet in the highly intermittent turbulence, breakup dynamics, and evaporation. As usual, uh, I introduce the speaker for about a minute and then I give him the floor. So, a uh, doctor in physics and mathematics in 1981, Mikhail Gorokovsky um, worked for 10 years at the State University. Uh, of uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, since 1991, he has been carrying out his research and teaching in France at the University of Rouen, uh, where he was appointed university professor in 1995. Since 2006, he has been a professor at Ecole Centrale de Lyon, where he teaches fluid mechanics and uh, uh, combustion in his research at LMFA. Uh, UNR 5509. He focuses on understanding the statistical physics of turbulence in the presence of different phases. At ECOVTAC, European Research Community on Flow, Turbulence and Combustion, Mikhail Gorokovsky is a coordinator of the Center Henri uh, Benard. Uh, he is also a member of the Russian Science uh, Foundation Expert Panel, Editorial Fellow of the Atomization and Sprays and guest member of the editorial board of the annual review of fluid mechanics. Among his stays abroad, he was senior fellow at Stanford University in 2000-2001. It's with great pleasure that I introduce uh, Mikhail Gorokovsky for uh, the webinar of today. So Mikhail, I stop sharing my screen and uh, please go ahead and share uh, yours. But I, I already shared it. Uh, uh, I think you need to share it once again because I did like yeah. yeah. Now we see it. That's great. Mm -hmm. So let me uh, put the pointer. Uh, yeah, we see the pointer, the yes. red pointer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, hello to everybody and uh, Francesca, thank you very much for this invitation and uh, also uh, um, I take the occasion to, to thank uh, Christos uh, for inviting me. And so my uh, title is um, exactly what you said, what you pronounced, but with some modification. Instead of stochastic model, I, I put intuitive model. So it is almost the same. Uh, instead of the highly intermittent turbines, I put um, in the under-resolved turbines. And, um, I will start with the dispersion, with the evaporation. If the time will allow, I will speak about the breakup. Because really, uh, when I prepared this um, talk, um, uh, so immediately I've got the mass of uh, uh, slides and so and. Um, uh, speaking frank frankly, uh, I didn't select the best one for breakup, but if there are any questions, I will speak about the breakup. So, and from the very beginning, I would like, and I'm pleased to introduce you my former PhD students, uh, Remy Zamansky, who is now uh, in MFT Toulouse, Alexis Barsh, who is now in Ligi Grenoble, and Suri Orugandi, uh, who is uh, uh, still working for Volvo uh, Group Track Technology. So uh, the introduction. And let me start uh, with, um, uh, with three examples of the higher Reynolds number um, under resolved flow with evaporating droplets. And the first example is related to the uh, stratocumulus clouds, uh, which occupy um, the upper uh, few hundreds meters um, in the uh, uh, planetary boundary layer. And uh, on the top of these clouds, um, because of there is a uh, radiative long wave cooling, which makes the air uh, heavier, in contrast, uh, in the upward convection of the moisture, because of the condensation, there is a 
so-called latent heating. And this makes the air lighter. So um, and these actions, this gradient of temperature um, uh, imposes, imposes the um, permanent um, overturning circulation of air um, with evaporating droplets. So if, for example, we um, look at the data uh, from Leibniz Institute, data mostly from uh, Siebert, um, uh, they measured uh, epsilon, the uh, dissipation, and you see that the um, value of this dissipation mean in time during along the flight path uh, is really very low. But the um, fluctuation of dissipation is very high, and um, we can um, uh, calculate from um, the mean uh, uh, the viscous dissipation, we uh, can evaluate the Kolmogorov scale. It gives, I don't know, I've never been here in the sky, not yet, but uh, the estimation uh, gives uh, 750 microns. And uh, the special scale is very large. So, so it, it, uh, it's of order of 100 meters. So that's why we have large separation in scales, 10 power of five, and which gives you, um, which gives us um, the Reynolds number uh, from 10 power six, 10 power seven. So this, um, this value was um, mentioned in three annual review in fluid mechanics in, uh, specifically by uh, show. So uh, if to trust to these articles, so the uh, turbulence is highly intermittent uh, and uh, turbulence at, at a high Reynolds number. Uh, at the same time, the droplets diameter is from in, uh, um, stratocumulus clouds um, from 10 to 100 microns, uh, uh, while in warm raindrops, uh, the droplets are of uh, two millimeters. So um, no way to simulate the, uh, uh, this situation directly. The only way is to apply some um, approximation, some um, uh, um, model of under-resolved turbulence, in particular large eddy simulation. And if we know how, if we manage, if we cope with all processes um, involved, um, then we could um, hope that uh, uh, we can uh, predict the weather. It is already predicted very well, but still uh, it will be better predicted, I would say, and we can elaborate further the climate models. Uh, the second second example uh, is related to the human cough or sneeze. It's really very actual example uh, because uh, I've got yesterday evening uh, the booster and so and uh, uh, for me uh, really uh, just to see this picture is, uh, makes me trembling. So uh, the cough is a, uh, is a burst of warm uh, humid air with uh, evaporating uh, inside droplets, okay? And so <clears throat> The measurement of uh, the velocity of uh, um, the um, uh, um, uh, exhaled spray um, is uh, biphasic. The first phase is really very short. It is 50 uh, uh, milliseconds, uh, during which the um, velocity um, is growing up from zero to 22 mil in mean, um, 22 um, meters per second here. And, uh, and the air um, torn off, um, uh, the exhaled uh, air torn off uh, the bulk of the mucus. And then the mucus, mucus is, um, the velocity is decreasing, so 
the injection is decelerated and the um, previous portion of injection um, uh, uh, is uh, faster than the subsequent uh, one. And so uh, it gives just a disruption of uh, uh, filaments of the mucus, uh, um, which creates the spray. So uh, here, um, uh, what I did, um, I just uh, have taken the uh, entrapment coefficient from the uh, measurements uh, um, in uh, uh, Buruiba lab um, in M MIT. It gives 0 0.21. Um, and uh, we can evaluate the dissipation. It is the, <clears throat> let a little bit exaggerate 0 0.21 uh, times 22 uh, square uh, divided by the dur uh, duration of the first um, phase and it gives 427 meters square per second cube. So um, uh, um, using the viscosity, we can um, evaluate the Kolmogorov dissipative scale. And here also we have a uh, huge separation of scales and the very big Reynolds number. Um, meanwhile, the exhaled flowing droplets, not uh, falling droplets, they are um, of 100 microns, but flowing here droplets, um, they are uh, from 10 to 30 microns, okay? So, and um, uh, measurements in uh, uh, the lab of uh, uh, Buruiba um, show that the extension of this uh, two-phase plume uh, is of uh, seven, eight meters. So, and um, even now we don't understand why it is so long. And in order to understand, in order to pre-established criteria of social behavior. We need to simulate in real uh, situation and indoor um, uh, configuration. And so, and um, I think that LES is the only one and not DNS, LES is the only one approach which could help us uh, to do this. Um, the third, exam third example, oops, tak. The third example um, concerns the direct injection in modern internal combustion engines. So um, here you see the vis visualization of the spray injected in the high pressure gases chamber. Uh, the uh, liquid is injected um, there are perturbances at interface, uh, um, a lot of reason of uh, such perturbances. It, it uh, can be the instabilities, it can be the perturbation because of the rigosity, it can be the cavitation because uh, the um, fluid particles during a fraction of millisecond um, pass a very complex trajectory here and because of centri but um, effects, uh, there is a pressure occurs uh, uh, lower than the uh, pressure of um, uh, saturated um, vapor. And so that's, that then you have the cavitation and so on. Um, brief, we, we are interested here in the second, um, um, uh, second zone, uh, which is called uh, secondary breakup. So we in this zone, we have the produced droplets. And what is interesting? What is interesting that um, the chamber is at supercritical conditions, but there is still spray-like dynamics with droplets generation, with quasi um, um, uh, classical evaporation. And uh, the recent measurements of uh, um, Cyril Kua in, uh, in the Brighton University or in uh, uh, Javier Orsay in Princeton, uh, over, sorry, at Stanford University, they, they showed that um, even at supercritical condition, 
uh, in the Gezi chamber. Uh, chamber. Uh, you need still the time um, uh, from uh, um, under critical conditions, under critical conditions, uh, to heat the jet in order to um, allow to play these supercritical conditions. And this time of heating is um, larger than the droplets formation and uh, then uh, you have um, the uh, spray-like dynamics. And also um, Ursay uh, showed theoretically that um, even uh, at the supercritical condition, the surface tension is non-zero and it gives you a really interface which persisting, which gives uh, all pictures which we imagined before um, uh, such a uh, discussion about the supercritical condition. So um, uh, measurements show that the droplets are of one to 30 uh, microns. Reynolds um, of the droplet is small, is uh, from one to 10. Uh, however, um, the turbulent fluxes around the droplet are uh, intense and maybe strongly intermittent. Uh, the measurements uh, in our laboratory in LMFA showed that the velocity um, uh, the, uh, seen by the droplets is, uh, has the long um, tails. Uh, the measurements of um, Wu and uh, Fayette um, uh, shows that the Kolmogorov scale is from one to 10 microns. So the separation is also uh, of scale is also very uh, significant and the Reynolds number is very high. So again, to simulate this by DNS, no way. So we need to apply the LES. Uh, what is the matter? What is the motiv motivation um, uh, to make the intellectual effort? So if we if we um, write the instantaneous vapor mass equation here, you have the turbulent mixing, you have the diffusion, uh, which smear the gradients, you have the uh, chemical reaction term. And if, if you are in the places where droplets are already evaporated, then that's it the uh, statistics of the um, chemical reaction rate of the combustion, uh, it is controlled um, by the turbulent mixing, okay? But in places where droplets are not yet evaporated, there is another term, this term. And in uh, this term, it, uh, this term includes uh, the interface density, which is the result uh, from the droplet population or uh, from atomization, from dispersion, and also the flux of the vapor issued from the uh, surface of droplets. Okay, uh, the uh, coefficient one minus yv vapor uh, comes um, from uh, the fact that uh, it is written for the um, mass vapor mass fraction and not for the partial uh, uh, vapor density. So, and this is purely small scale uh, processes vaporization, atomization, dispersion, interaction, interaction with the smaller scale in the flow because you have here the gradient, okay? So um, uh, that means that in sprays, um, there is a very important interaction between local flow structure and droplets break up dispersion, vaporization. Uh, and if turbulence is under-resolved, so that, uh, that means resolved up to the um, uh, filter um, 
uh, 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 sickness. Um, then then uh, we need to construct the model from uh, contributions on residual scales. So Durban interacts with uh, uh, droplet um, dynamics, vaporization, and breaker. And it, this is crucial because if we uh, cannot predict this interaction, then um, uh, the result uh, uh, will be um, wrong. And uh, in practice, we will have unburned fuel and, and pollute pollutions uh, polluted. Okay, so uh, once we said uh, small scales, um, what's going on on small scales? So uh, starting from the earlier uh, works of uh, Javier Jimenez, of Frederick Mo Frederick um, Moazi, even much earlier from um, Corsin. So um, there are robust results indicating that uh, the flow structure um, at smaller scale is not really homogeneous. It, uh, it is uh, that um, there are um, sheets, worms, um, um, vertical tubes, um, uh, which persist uh, long time and which inter interact each uh, one which is, uh, which is each other. Um, here, um, um, so and during last uh, few years, we've got um, a number of very interesting papers on the DNS uh, of the turbulence um, from uh, J.K. Uh, young uh, from uh, Buaria in collaboration with Alan Pumio, with uh, Srinivasan, with Bodenshad, uh, really very good papers um, and very illustrated, illustrated um, in which they um, try to understand what's going on on small scales, how um, vertical um, uh, tubes interact, uh, how they form um, the strain sheets, and um, what is really the cascade on small small scales. So that's why here there is a um, close look of the snapshot uh, of the entropy in Siyang and dissipation in red. And it is presented here. And so and we see here that uh, we have a tangle of vortex tube uh, assisted by intense dissipation sheets. And what is important for, for me, uh, it is that um, uh, this um, um, vortex tube and this uh, uh, dissipation sheets at the scale which is of order of um, filter um, sickness, they are randomly um, directed, oriented, and they and the spacing is also random. So and then, then authors Buaria and others, they um, uh, um, increase the counter threshold and um, uh, just emphasizing emphasizing uh, the um, um, the um, intensity of uh, the um, uh, vortex tubes. And so, and you see here the strain acting on a given vortex and um, the velocity jumps, the velocity jump is of order of highest velocity of RMS velocities across smallest, smallest length scales. So, um, and uh, those DNS, they confirmed um, uh, the uh, conclusion of, from um, uh, Jimenez papers that there are jumps of velocity, that there are extreme gradients of the velocity on smallest, even much smallest than Kolmogorov uh, scale lengths. 
and this is the intermittency and uh, this increments of velocity gives uh, heavy tails in pdf um, and these heavy tails uh, becomes most uh, um, stretched with the higher Reynolds number so and um, the velocity extreme velocity gradients they scaled with uh, Reynolds uh, uh, number so our motivation is to take into account uh, the intermittency effect in a subgrid scale model so there are two ways two ways to to do this the first way is so-called no uh, should there are another ways but um, uh, uh, explicitly uh, in mind, I have two ways um, of simulation um, of those effects. So the first way is um, so-called is referred to as um, LES uh, stochastic subgrid acceleration model. So the idea is the following. So you uh, present the uh, the momentum equation for a surrogate not real but surrogate velocity field in which in the form of uh, the um, uh, langevin equation for example not langevin equation but stochastic equation so uh, you have um, the here the instantaneous acceleration of a surrogate field instantaneous field of the velocity you have the gradient of the pressure which uh, gives you a continuity equation to be satisfied you have so-called as klimantovich um, uh, introduced the term effective regularization in 70s um, uh, uh, effective regularization where the uh, eddy viscosity can be calculated either by uh, um, uh, Smagorinsky or by other more sophisticated models and we add, add the stochastic force uh, or fluctuating force and this fluctuating force the difference the difference of this fluctuating force, this um, uh, um, uh, other techniques for forcing in physical space, physical space, is that we um, impose here, we associated um, the properties, stochastic properties of this uh, fluctuating force with the known knowledge um, uh, on the acceleration and the forcing is here on subgrid scale and not on large scale so we uh, in uh, LAS says the same we introduce uh, the forcing as the orstein ullenbeck stochastic process with um, all properties which we um, uh, got from uh, experimental DNS, stochastic properties included to uh, that orstein ullenbeck process. And then once you have the, uh, this instantaneous velocity, you can write the heavy particle driven by the stokes dry um, equation okay where the tau, tau p is the um, response time and here is the velocity calculated by um, uh, ssm uh, approach okay and um, in fact uh, the first paper was uh, um, appeared in for homogeneous isotropic turbulence in 2011 then with remy um, we um, uh, modified and extended this approach for the channel flow then we revisited in 2019 this approach and recently with alexis barsh we developed further this approach for the homogeneous trade but why we are not happy with this approach here the simulation 
uh, stochastic simulation is um, as ev evolution in time and not in space. So that's why the two point spatial correlation in uh, the simulation of, for example, amplitude and direction in this uh, fluctuating force are limited by the filter widths. And uh, it is, uh, in fact, difficult to imagine that um, for the acceleration, it's okay. And uh, um, it is in line with Kolmogorov uh, theory uh, of very short correlation of a uh, short spatial correlation of the acceleration, but still um, to simulate the um, amplitude. Um, in uh, time and not in space, uh, it is a little bit um, inconvenient and cumbersome, and so we, we continue to work on this. Okay, so today I will present another approach, much uh, easier approach, but uh, with the same um, opening of uh, ideas. So this is the LES stochastic drug model. So we have the um, uh, classical LES equation, convection, eddy viscosity term, um, a pressure gradient um, term, continuity equation. And, uh, but, but uh, this flow is loaded by uh, um, uh, uh, inertial heavy particles. And the equation for the motion of these uh, uh, particles is stochastic. That means that acceleration is split or decomposed on filter part and subgrid scale part, stochastic part. So that means that um, uh, um, we write the stochastic equation for the um, particle motion. So uh, idea is not new. Um, the, for example, in Wang squares um, for classical uh, equation, the um, velocity was presented as a filter plus uh, velocity fluctuation, which was sampled from the Gaussian, local Gaussian, uh, around the uh, subgrid scale kinetic energy. Um, uh, Jacek Pazorski and Surab Apti uh, proposed here to write the um, uh, Langevin equation for the um, fluid particles seen by the uh, uh, heavy particle. Uh, Bini Jones um, wrote. Um, uh, Bini and Jones wrote uh, the um, uh, stochastic equation, uh, Langevin type stochastic equation for the um, heavy particle acceleration. Here is a delta correlated Wiener process. That means that correlated only on delta T and um, with the intensity from uh, um, kinetic equation. Um, of um, unresolved um, oh, kinetic, sorry, kinetic energy of unresolved scales. So the main drawbacks of these um, uh, models is that there is no invariance on small scales because they are invariant to the local Reynolds number. There is no viscosity here. They are whatever the Reynolds number is, the same statistics. And um, there is a um, underestimation of the subgrid scales because if the um, filter width is in the inertial range, then the velocity um, fluctuation, um, non-resolved um, velocities are much smaller than resolved. And so our um, objective is to introduce the stochastic model here, um, which is uh, which has um, uh, physical time of correlation. That means that uh, uh, um, in, uh, described in framework of orstein ullenbeck um, statistical process, and also uh, the statistics 
of these terms um, is sensible to the Reynolds number. And if we do this in two-way coupling, then the, our equation is uh, completed by the outside stochastic term along the particle trajectory. So along the particle trajectory, we introduce the correlation. And uh, the uh, correlation, uh, according to our Orstein Olympic um, processes with typical um, uh, uh, correlation time, physical correlation time. And then on the uh, and the rest of this equation is not really the filtered one. It, it becomes uh, some surrogate instantaneous um, if there are no much particles locally, because uh, here the um, contribution to the momentum equation from the particle is the summation, and then uh, summation is the average. Okay, so this is our goal. But before to um, formulate the models, uh, I would like to do uh, some um, um, uh, notes uh, which give me a recipe uh, how to introduce the intermittency. So the first, the first um, remark concerns the maxi uh, centrifuge mechanism. So. Um, uh, Maxi um, um, considered the um, in 1987 considered the um, droplets acceleration equation um, in classical way uh, with small um, uh, relaxation time response time, and he um, integrated this equation along the trajectory. Then um, he calculated the integral uh, by parts and he um, abbreviated um, um, uh, the solution up to the um, term of the second order of uh, tau p square. Okay, so and for calculating the uh, divergence of um, this velocity, um, he obtained the result which says very interesting mm, uh, mechanism that in um, uh, because of the particle inertia, the particle um, response time, um, the region of the high vorticity, they withdraw particles. And uh, there is a preferential sampling of region with the low vorticity and high strain. But let us uh, calculate the next term here, exactly with the same manner uh, which was proposed by Maxi. Uh, and then you have the next term, next term, uh, this term, uh, term three which has this uh, form and um, introducing the kalmogorov obukov um, estimation of uh, acceleration is um, epsilon over uh, time uh, or one uh, uh, root square uh, from epsilon uh, divided by kalmogorov scale. We see that the ratio of the third term on over the second term is the function of the Reynolds number. And then at very high Reynolds number, there is no more this relation. There will be very complex interaction of uh, um, velocity gradients. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, um, not very easy to um, make uh, beauty on the um, uh, divergen divergency of this velocity field. So um, that means at higher noise number, the, uh, to the, should be the alternatives to the maxi centrifugal mechanism. Like, for example, we proposed uh, with Alexei Barsh uh, the preferential sampling of region with the high vorticity for higher inertial pa uh, particles. And in, contrary, in contrast to the maxi mechanism, higher the inertia is, uh, higher they are accumulated in the high vorticity uh, tubes. So that means that, in fact, the 
Stokes drug it plays the secondary role in the uh, small scale dynamics of the particle um, in the high Reynolds number turbulence. But which one is the key var uh, variable? The second common is as follows. So it comes from the classical result. Uh, uh, there are many people who wrote this result, but uh, I learned it from the um, uh, uh, the book of Vadim Kuznetsov and Vladimir Sabelnikov um, uh, translated in English in 1990. So you have the uh, uh, velocity acceleration expression and uh, the uh, Stokes drag, uh, the drag time in the Stokes form. And you are interesting in the um, uh, mean um, stationary sto solution of the relative velocity seen by the, this particle in the environment turbulence. And if you imply the Yaglom uh, spectrum, then you will have this result, that uh, the mean relative velocity uh, is scaled as the epsilon times uh, 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 relaxation time. So, and in this integral, integral, it is seen that um, the main contribution to this integral comes from high turbulent frequencies, uh, higher than the frequencies uh, associated with the relaxation time. And um, uh, having that for the mean uh, epsilon, uh, we can assume we can assume that conditionally it is also true. Conditionally, it is also true. And then divided by delta t, we can show that it is seen. It is seen that the acceleration of the particle condition of the on the epsilon uh, is equal to epsilon over tau p, tau p uh, power one half, and it can be linked to the Kolmogorov acceleration with the um, uh, factors uh, depending on the um, density uh, ratio in fluid and in of particles and Kolmogorov scale, dissipative scale, and diameter of particle. Okay, this is the second comment. The third comment is as follows. So we uh, we've understood that epsilon is very important. Let us just add to the filtered velocity, add the um, uh, subgrid source, uh, depending on the um, uh, fluid particle acceleration, where beta is depending on the on those uh, ratios. And uh, then uh, again, integrating this equation um, along the particle path, and then applying Leibniz rule for differentiation uh, with t as a um, parameter over uh, along the particle path, the, we have such an expression for the uh, heavy particle acceleration, where we have one term which is slowly varying because it is based on the uh, resolved viscous dissipation. And there is another term which is based based on the non-resolved epsilon. And this, is, this term uh, gives jumps intermittency. It is very fastly varying. So, and you see that the second term is of primary importance on the acceleration along the particle path. Okay, so and um, uh, that that means that uh, we need to introduce such kind of equation. Introducing here is a dissipation or uh, velocity or acceleration of the fluid particles. Okay, so what are the um, 
uh, properties of the of the acceleration of the fluid particles, what are Lagrangian properties. They are now uh, well known for, starting from the experiments of Nicolas Mardin, then uh, of uh, Mikhail Bourguin, of uh, Porta, of, of uh, in the um, team of Bodenschatz. Uh, so um, the acceleration is shortly correlated, correlated on Kolmogorov scales. So that means that direction and norm are weakly correlated. And we have heavy tails, heavy tails, depending on the Reynolds number, on the Reynolds number uh, in PDF of acceleration. So the norm is um, correlated on um, uh, important times and the direction is shortly correlated, shortly, shortly correlated. And because of the structures of the particles captured uh, uh, by um, uh, vertical uh, st uh, um, structure, vertical tubes, uh, um, um, uh, this vertical tubes is interacting with another vertical tubes, this gives the uh, acceleration with very long time of correlation. So that's why, that's why we need to introduce these properties uh, in the model of the heavy particle acceleration. So, and the last comment, um, if to introduce very simple, in the very simple way, this property acceleration is shortly correlated on Kolmogorov scales to the um, stochastic mode. Just saying that uh, velocity it, um, is controlled by large scales and is correlated by um, uh, inter integral time scales and the acceleration is controlled by small um, uh, scale properties um, by time of Kolmogorov. Um, multiplying the first equation by uh, the acceleration and the second equation by the velocity and um, adding these two equations, we can come in to uh, uh, this equation. And since uh, uh, integral time is much higher than um, Kolmogorov time, then we can drop this the first term and we obtain the classical relation from the Obukov uh, diffusion coefficient. So um, uh, um, that means that the correlation of acceleration at the velocity gives in the framework of the underlying by uh, uh, French washing machine properties, um, we come in in the well-known um, result from KO41 theory. So that's why that's why we can use the KO41 definition of acceleration in the model. So uh, the model for the droplet motion. Uh, it, it comes from our uh, previous estimation, the filter part, um, the acceleration is decomposed in uh, filter part and the um, stochastic part. Uh, subgrid part. In this stochastic part, we have two stochastic variables. One is the norm and another is the direction. Since they are separated in time, they are uh, correlated on very different times, then we can represent them by two stochastically independent uh, variables and to write the stochastic orstein olimbeck equation here and stochastic orstein olimbeck equation here. So the question, which one? So the, um, the history starts with Obuchov's uh, 62 log normal conjecture, uh, saying that in the considered volume, the um, dissipation, viscous dissipation averaged over small sphere of the uh, 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 radius um, R is log normally distributed with variance depending on the Reynolds number. Okay, already in this presumed log normal distribution, there is a uh, dispersion of uh, uh, depending on the Reynolds number. And then Pope 
1990, very formally um, implied uh, or applied um, the log normal process along the fluid particle, saying that um, if a guy um, is the uh, Gaussian Gaussian variable, Gaussian variable, then um, it is a Gaussian process, and he rewrote uh, from the Gaussian process the process for uh, um, viscous dissipation along the fluid particle path. This is the um, stochastic process of POP, stochastic log normal of POP, um, with the mean here and with the autocorrelation time scale. Uh, which is of the order uh, of the integral time scale. And uh, in the variance, we uh, have the uh, Reynolds dependency. So uh, we can also go in the same vein, very formally, saying that in the uh, considered volume, the, uh, the log normal process for epsilon power of one half can be applied, but along the fluid, along uh, the, not I'm sorry, for along the inertial particle uh, path, not fluid particle path. So, and um, uh, by E to transformation, it is easy done. This is the uh, stochastic equation of the, um, uh, for the norm of the uh, subgrid scale acceleration. So if we know how to calculate the um, mean or the integrals over log normal distribution of functions, exponential chi over uh, power chi uh, over two over and chi uh, times um, exponential chi over two, then we can show, we can show uh, that the mean is equal to zero and the second moment is this, okay? So concerning the direction, the direction. Uh, again, I'm coming back to the um, uh, uh, results of DNS. There is a, a small scale, scales uh, inside the um, uh, uh, filter widths, there are uh, random direction and spacing of uh, filaments. So that's why it is natural to represent this as a um, um, diffusion, diffusion on, a, on the unit sphere, on the unit sphere, um, uh, as a uh, orstein ullenbeck process. Uh, but shortly correlation on correlated on um, Kolmogorov times. Uh, it is easy to write the differential equation with the diffusion coefficient controlled by um, Kolmogorov times, and it is easy to show that the norm it is uh, of uh, unit um, vector is always conserved just multiplying by <clears throat> e uh, here and uh, then you have uh, scalar uh, products e divided by two and then um, because of um, uh, vector product, uh, cross vector product, uh, you have zero here. But it is easy to write, but it is not easy to uh, realized to integrate this equation. Why? Because the equation is written for the infinitely small uh, differential of Wiener isotropic process. And in reality, it is not really infinitely small. And even if you write the in eta calculus, the stochastic equation with all rules uh, from eta calculus, you see there are nonlinear effects. And so, and this nonlinearity makes difficult uh, to integrate this equation. So uh, you can uh, periodically have a negative correlation or um, growing correlation and um, negative uh, uh, components, etc. 
uh so uh, that uh, that requires very small very small delta t but uh, we know that stratonovich calculus enjoys the classical rules of differential analysis and in stratonovich calculus the equation for the diffusion process on the unit sphere sphere is um linear linear so we uh, use um, the stochastic equation for the direction uh, as a um, uh, Stratonovich or Stein Ullenbeck equation with uh, autocorrelation time, um, uh, Kolmogorov time. Okay, and this is the example uh, with the relaxation. Uh, it is easy to add here the relaxation term um, uh, from the delta function you relax to the um, uh, angle um, uh, defined by the component uh, zero point, minus 0 0.5 here or without relaxation without relaxation using using the midpoint numerical schemes and the midpoint numerical schemes developed for the diffusion of the um, units vector was proposed in 2019 in collaboration with Vladimir Sabelnikov and Alexis Barsh. So what gives the new model um, of the uh, inertial particle um, uh, equation, uh, motion? So he, um, we have from these two equations uh, two um, parameters local parameters the dissipation mean dissipation and the Reynolds number the Reynolds number uh, is in variance and the local dissipation gives um, um, uh, um, Kolmogorov time scale so uh, for different Reynolds number the norm um, manifest displays long tails long tails and longer tails tails uh, as Reynolds is growing up. Uh, this is the norm. This is the acceleration itself. You have long tails uh, which are developed uh, increasing Reynolds number and this is the correlation, autocorrelation uh, function of the norm and uh, it um, becomes more extended uh, if the Reynolds number uh, becomes higher. Uh, if to consider the um, uh, um, comparison with LES, then, uh, um, I'm sorry, this uh, comparison with the LES and implemented this model, the fit, the fit um, from experiment shows that it is very closely to the prediction uh, um, from LES with the model. With the model, uh, you, you um, um, we obtained also invariance of st uh, standardized PDF, the non-Gaussianity because this is the Gaussianity. In the case, all this is in the case of homogeneous isotropic turbulence uh, for it, it was for different uh, ratio dp over uh, Kolmogorov scale um, for different ratios of the densities um, uh, uh, liquid and fluid um, uh, you see here the variance of uh, particles acceleration uh, really predicted uh, uh, well predict, uh, predicts um, the DNS of Jeremy Beck, uh, while the uh, LES uh, with no model, with no model, um, fails this prediction uh, for the flatness also. Uh, here is the um, prediction of LES uh, with no model. I'm running fast uh, because really uh, the time is uh, collapsing. So for the particles, um, for the particle uh, larger than the Kolmogorovsky, the model is as follows. Uh, 2P includes 
an essential part of the turbulence the, uh, frequ uh, frequency uh, spectrum. It is okay. So let us introduce the instantaneous dissipation averaged over sphere of dp. Okay. Typically, as we um, uh, know from KO62. Um, uh, and then, then we um, uh, also apply the um, uh, um, uh, the assumption from KO62. Uh, that means that the conditional statistics of the momentum flux transferred to the particle is universal and is controlled solely by this instantaneous dissipation um, over uh, average over a sphere um, uh, of diameter dp. That means that we postulated such kind of scaling and then we can write the expression of aerodynamic the, the dynamic drag. And this aerodynamic drag uh, uh, gives, gives the equation, equation for the particle acceleration. And you see here the relaxation time is depending on the local instantaneous dissipation rate seen by the uh, particle along its trajectory. So if we construct the uh, stochastic processes for this, and if we have the direction, then we have the acceleration. If we introduce the acceleration uh, um, direction, then we have this expression. And then we need two models for the direction and for the norm. But the, as a first step, it would be very interesting to use this form of this equation. Uh, but in terms of DNS, that means that here we use the DNS, here we use the DNS, and we compare the st uh, statistics of uh, the particle acceleration with the um, experimental results uh, uh, given by Mikhail uh, um, Bourguin um, um, in uh, his habilitation uh, de uh, recherche. So the first result for the particle velocity, there is a typical Gaussian, whatever the ratio of um, a particle diameter and uh, Kolmogorov scale is, whatever the ratio of density is, there is a typical Gaussian um, um, form. And uh, this confirms that at large scales, there is a uh, central limit theory, it, it is working, and it con confirms also that the particle inertia is a uh, place secondary role and the central role plays the dissipation rate, the intermittency. Uh, the autocorrelation of the particle is of order of the, I'm sorry, the, um, um, the dispersion variance of the particle is of order of the variance. This is the consequence of my uh, uh, booster shots. It is not the autocorrelation of particles. <laughs> um, it is the variance of uh, particles. So the ratio is one of variance. That means that means that particles they are uh, following all. Um, um, stochastic fate uh, coming from or imposed uh, by the um, uh, uh, flow structure. Uh, if we uh, compare the uh, acceleration statistics, we have heavy tails, we have also invariant form for all these ratios for uh, standardized um, PDF of the acceleration. And we have also same, almost same autocorrelation function uh, of the particle acceleration for all 
um, uh, parameters um, indicating uh, the inertia of the particle. So again, here, the central law role of dissipation rate and also the um, correct prediction of our model. So uh, uh, if we introduced the um, uh, classical form, classical form, this uh, relaxation time uh, so, uh, given by the Stokes expression, we have no such effect, uh, neither in autocorrelation of the particle acceleration, neither or in the um, PDF of the acceleration. Uh, for the velocity increments, uh, again, the model model in which epsilon and velocity comes from PDF gives the correct prediction of the um, PDF of the velocity increment. And you see the Gaussian form at large uh, velocity increments and uh, uh, appearing uh, stretch heavy tails uh, on the small uh, time increments. Uh, also given the, uh, mani this is the manifestation of the in, um, intermittency. With the classical, classical uh, uh, acceleration expression, it is not the case. So we can now, we can, um, I'm sorry, it is, uh, yes. Uh, now we can write the um, log normal process by eta uh, transformation for epsilon uh, power two third. We can apply also the eta, um, uh, sorry, the orstein ullenbeck process for the um, direction. Here they are. And also we can show that they give such an ex the expression. Introducing the local two parameters, mean dissipation rate and Reynolds number, we have same condition, uh, same um, effects as uh, for particles less than Kolmogorov um, uh, scale. Long tails, long tails for the norm, for the acceleration itself, and increasing of the um, autocorrelation extension of the autocorrelation with increasing the Reynolds number time, uh, Reynolds, uh, Reynolds number. So uh, next, next um, uh, model is the particle, oh, the um, evaporizing, evaporating droplets. So again, in our uh, laboratory, uh, uh, by digital holography um, in conditions nearly uh, homogeneous isotropic turbulence um, creating by six um, uh, synthetic jets um, uh, symmetrically, uh, anti-symmetrically um, located. Um, uh, they shared such a video, very impressive video. Uh, there is a motion of evaporating droplets and suddenly, suddenly it gives you burst of the plume uh, of the vapor. So, so the burst of the vapor released very suddenly. And I think that this is the manifestation of the um, uh, vertical um, structures seen uh, on the droplet pass. So, and we uh, um, uh, motivated to introduce such fluctuations, uh, but um, along the um, uh, evaporating droplet pass. Okay, so, but before, let me remind you uh, the standard model of uh, droplet evaporation applied in uh, the framework of LES. So in the framework of standard LES, uh, the um, vapor issued from the droplets is 
instantaneously, homogeneously steered, mixed up on scale on result scales. So that's why um, if to write the released vapor flux, this guy, this gradient of the vapor mass flux, or vapor mass fraction on the uh, droplet uh, surface comes from the resolved vapor mm, mass fraction. Uh, why Vs uh, uh, comes from the uh, thermodynamical mm, relation on the droplet surface. So you see this gradient is also resolved. Uh, the Sherwood number is also resolved and the contribution of all droplets locally um, uh, visited given the given computational cell is also comes from resolved scales. So you uh, that means that um, the structures inside this high gradients, local gradients are not resolved. And our motivation is to introduce the jumps or the um, uh, events of high fluctuation of gradients coming from flow structures um, on smaller scales. So how we did it? Again, uh, you see the uh, picture from DNS. Um, hopefully, I will be not judged uh, using um, uh, this uh, official uh, uh, picture without uh, specific permission. Um, uh, here is the um, uh, evaporating droplets with the uh, vapor mass fraction on the surface, and we uh, assume that the vapor mass fraction seen by this droplet is stochastic in between result one, that means very strong uh, instantaneous uh, mixing and the absence of mixing. That means um, the um, uh, mass fraction um, coming from the surface. So that means that instead of um, resolved gradient, we impose the stochastic gradient with the stochastic value here. The question is how to define this, uh, just having, you know, that, uh, having the Wiener process here, uh, it is not physically because the relay, uh, correlation time scale is um, uh, in Wiener process is imposed by delta t and it is not physical. So uh, we need to impose here some physical assumption. And so what um, we use here is the partially premixed reactor model uh, in the in turbulent combustion. In turbulent combustion, there is a partially premixed reactor model uh, proposed by uh, Lev Woolis, um, and uh, uh, and the cons using after by. Um, Shobiak uh, by um, uh, Vladimir Sabelnikov, um, by many people uh, to um, simulate the turbulent combustion on, re on uh, residual scales. So I just rewrite this um, uh, model, but in terms of the evaporation. Uh, I assumed that the essential evaporation takes place only if a droplet interacts with fine intense structures. Fine intense structures, high gradients, and um, uh, higher, stronger evaporation. And the global evaporation is the result of the succession of two steady state processes, evaporation and mixing. In order to evaporate, you should remove, evacuate the vapor from the vicinity of the droplet. And to remove the vapor is the uh, work of the vertical structures which um, uh, scaven uh, the vapor, which uh, evacuate the vapor in the, from the vicinity of the droplet. 
So that means that means that each process is uh, characterized by typical scale, by uh, typical scale of the evaporation, time scale of the evaporation, and time scale of the mixing. So if the time scale of the mixing is much less than evaporation time, evaporation time which comes from uh, d square law, for example, that means that uh, um, the uh, uh, mixing is uh, extremely fast, extremely strong. That means that the um, um, uh, uh, stochastic vapor mass fraction is equal to resolved one. Everything is mixed up in uh, very instantaneously. If you have weak turbulence, for example, droplets cluster, then evaporation is short compared to the mixing time. Uh, that means that there is no evacuation of the vapor from the vicinity. That means that the um, vapor mass fraction is uh, approximately uh, given by the uh, mass fraction at the surface. And so, for example, in clusters, um, there is a gathering of droplets. There is no, uh, uh, in two-way um, coupling, there is um, weak turbulence and there is no evacuation of uh, vapor. And then the gradient is zero. And so this is uh, extreme case and here is extreme case. So in order to compare this, uh, to combine this, the only way is this, the uh, stochastic value of vapor mass fraction around each droplet along its uh, 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 trajectory gives by this expression. So in fact, in fact, for example, this ratio is the volume fraction of vertical structures. Uh, less mixing time, singer uh, uh, volume structures, uh, stronger uh, gradients, um, um, uh, um, high, stronger is the evaporation rate, stronger is the gradient, stronger is the evaporation rate. And the mixing time is given by the uh, viscous dissipation. And for viscous dissipation, we are writing log normal process along the particle trajectory. Again, these local parameters, Reynolds number and the dissipation, okay? So what are the statistical properties of uh, uh, this model? So here, uh, for example, you can rewrite from this uh, expression, you can rewrite the expression for the gradient introducing uh, the ratio between evaporation time and mixing time. In uh, sometimes this ratio uh, is referred to as uh, Dumkeuler, well, evaporation Dumkeuler number. So uh, you see here uh, the behavior with time of this coefficient, coefficient, which makes the difference with classical approach behavior uh, with different mean dissipation rate, here 5, 50, 100, 500, and keeping same Reynolds number. So the mean uh, evaporation rate, um, but uh, evaporation rate uh, in its um, uh, expression um, uh, increases with the increasing the dissipation rate. The variance of this um, uh, coefficient also, uh, at constant epsilon, mean epsilon is increasing this Reynolds number. In fact, these are the properties which we uh, wanted to introduce in the modeling uh, of the evaporating droplets. So um, the next, the next um, is the assessment. But in the real conditions, you have the ECN conditions um, in um, uh, the injection, um, uh, the injection pressure is 150 uh, uh, megabar. 
and oh sorry megapascal and and um we will compare compare the um uh, statistics in two sections and also the length of penetration of the vapor of the uh, spray um, in times okay so uh, that means that uh, we use now not a simple um uh, uh, LES equations um, for uh, the academic interest, but the full uh, LES favor uh, average equations. But the novelty is that source terms, they are stochastic and they are represented by stochastic uh, orstein ullenbeck processes uh, in which we in, uh, we included the intermittency on the small uh, scales, on the smaller scales, okay? Uh, so this is the um, snapshots um, from um, uh, simulation using um, the Bank Squares uh, model, the Bini Jones model, and our stochastic model, and compared to the experimental one. You see, um, I uh, have no confidence to such kind of uh, picture, but still it is optimistic. Okay, so the stochastic gives uh, uh, more similar uh, results to the experiment than um, other standard. Uh, use, used in open form models, okay? No, uh, open open form used uh, one squared model and we introduced um, Vinnie Jones model. So um, with the same, the same uh, model of the breakup, uh, we can compare also the um, uh, uh, southern mean diameter along the axial uh, distance. And you see that the stochastic model gives uh, a very good prediction of the southern mean diameter along the axis uh, of the spray compared to the uh, two other models, standard classical models. And what is surprising, truly surprising, that our model is uh, very mm, weakly sensitive to the choice of the um, choice of the um, filter sickness. That means that means that uh, um, our model is uh, typically um, based on the subgrid scales and with the long uh, correlation time. That means that it 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 uh, doesn't feel the grid. So uh, this is the penetration of uh, lengths of non-vaporizing spray. You see for two different um, um, uh, size of the filter widths, uh, it is almost the same and it is much better than uh, Wang Squires and Bini Jones for the non-vaporizing spray and uh, penetration uh, <coughs> for the vaporizing spray, you see here. and. Um, uh, the um, uh, uh, snapshot of the vapor uh, fraction distribution uh, for the stochastic model, for the standard Bini, uh, uh, one squares and Bini Jones. And you see the advantage of the snapshots. Again, it is not really the characteristics of the good model um, to show such a snapshot, but better one if you calculate 15 times, 15 overall um, running of the um, uh, um, uh, LAS simulation and then you averaged um, on each section, on each section, and you compare the statistics with the uh, measured man, one. So the brown, the brown is stochastic model and um, the cyan and uh, um, blue this is from uh, Bini Jones and Wang Squares. So you see, especially on the um, 
uh, in the near far field uh, where the stochastic of dispersion is uh, plays an important role the advantage is explicit here is not really ingenious and so and uh, but uh, you know there is no model which gives you uh, perfect result so uh, same same with the mean vapor fraction and rms um, the model predicts relatively well relatively well the mass fraction distribution this is the um the profiles um as a result resulting from averaging over 15 um, computation uh, restarting computation so uh, uh concerning the uh, yes I'm, uh, I'm finishing. I'm okay, finishing. okay, okay. Yeah, I'm finished. So concerning the um, uh, um, physical results. So uh, you see here the uh, Voronoi volumes on uh, underlying vapor field. And you see that um, the droplets clustering are characterized by increased vapor mass fraction obtained, obtained here in the LAS. And here there is a Voronoi um, PDF, um, but conditional on the vapor um, uh, uh, vapor evaporation rate. And you see that um, droplets clustered, they show, they show uh, um, that in clusters the vaporization rate is low because the vapor is not evacuated from the cluster. So uh, here there is a, a conditional PDF, oh, sorry, combined PDF uh, of the evaporation rate and the uh, mixing time. And so you see that the shorter mixing time in Lagrangian PDF, this is the Lagrangian PDF, accumulated um, uh, from all histories, Lagrangian histories. Shorter the time, higher the evaporation rate. But if you uh, take the picture at this, uh, the certain time and you compute um, the Eulerian equation, uh, PDF, Eulerian PDF, uh, joint PDF of evaporation rate and of acceleration, you see that higher um, uh, evaporation rate belongs to the um, uh, droplets with um, low uh, evaporation for the Eulerian uh, PDFs. And so uh, this comes also from the snapshots of the acceleration uh, conditioned by the color of the evaporation rate you see in the periphery, hot periphery, uh, the droplets are uh, um, decelerated, they have um, uh, low acceleration, and uh, but because of the temperature, they um, uh, are strongly evaporating, and droplets clustered in the spray core, uh, they are, um, uh, they have also uh, low acceleration and they have low vorticity, low evaporation um, rate. So, but uh, coming from here to here, uh, that means uh, taking into account Lagrangian vorticity, oh, oh, sorry, Lagrangian um, trajectories gives uh, another uh, picture. Um, uh, um, uh, higher acceleration, there is a higher um, evaporation rate. So the conclusion, I'm sorry for to be long, the conclusion. So in the new stochastic model, we put the emphasis on the um, local uh, flow structure uh, described by the dissipation um, uh, rate and um, uh, this um, um, dissipation rate um, describes the behavior of the um, um, acceleration of the fluid particles seen instantaneously by the droplet, and the model predicts predicts in the case uh, predicts the. Uh, um, um, the 
uh, knowledge from the DNS and the experiment, and uh, also predict the measurements in the case of the ECN sprays. And the, uh, the few um, goal is the cloud turbulence, uh, exhalation sprays, and uh, the spray uh, combustion. So thank you, uh, um, and the question. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Mikhail, for uh, uh, the presentation. So maybe we have time for one or two short questions. So I'm sorry for keeping you waiting up to, to the end. I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, no, no problem. No problem. It was uh, very uh, dense and uh, full of details. So we, I am sure that we would have someone who can ask questions. And mm -hmm. thanks for, for, for the presentation. So. Uh, it is, uh, just feel free, if you want to ask a question, just feel free to unmute your mic and uh, ask a question, or you can write it in the chat and I can report it. So maybe I can uh, uh, ask a question myself yeah. uh, regarding the the drug uh, you the drug term you had um uh, so you, you you basically had kind of a you, you had a term derived by the the stokes drug does this somehow yeah yes yes yeah for large particles there is no stock drug for the okay. particles in uh, when the epsil is really um, uh, uh, when all uh, spectrum of turbulent times um, smaller than the uh, drug time uh, then there is no uh, stokes drug but uh, for smaller particles there is a there is a uh, drug, uh, Stokes drug. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, I, okay, I understand. And uh, in case in which we consider droplet, the Stokes part, the Stokes drug is supposed to kind of uh, uh, adjust to the to the drug of a uh, of a fluid droplet rather than uh, than a solid particle, right? So it's supposed to change kind of the response time. Uh, sorry, say it again. In case in which we consider a droplet rather a small droplet rather than a small uh, solid particle, this kind, this uh -huh, uh -huh. this uh, Stokes drag is supposed to kind of change the relaxation time with which the droplet responds to the to the flow, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so that does not change qualitatively the picture, or does it? You mean uh, here? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, in fact, in fact, the, so that's why we wrote the stochastic drag model. Uh, so here, the particle, in fact, the particle is, um, let me, um, uh, so, um, so the particle is larger, dp is larger than, um, the um, Kolmogorov scale. Mm -hmm. Kolmogorov scale. So that's why the particle particle C in front, all uh, edges, all edges mm -hmm. in between the Kolmogorov scale and DP. Okay. So that's why that's why all the um, drug is here, but it is fluctuating. Okay. It is not as the consequence of the inertia of particle. It's the consequence of the structure at smaller scale. Okay. 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 I understand. Okay. Thanks. So the, that's basically uh, somehow indirectly answers the the question I had. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um, is there any other uh, question for uh, Mikan? Uh, once again, just feel free to unmute your mic or to write it in the chat. Um, I have a follow-up question um, about about this point. Um, I'm could could you explain the mechanism by how a, an eddy which is smaller than the droplet can affect the the droplet? 
I find it difficult to understand. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me just ah the edit uh, for this guy. Uh, so uh, let me let me like that for this case. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, the droplet is still much smaller than it is still the point, the point. Okay, the material point. There is no the uh, resolution of boundary layer around the droplet. There is a uh, just a the point in which we um, uh, we introduce the interaction interaction with uh st flow structure seen by the hypothetically seen by uh, these big uh, droplets above the kolmogorov skin so uh the mm, interaction can be very very uh, mm, uh complex but what we need what we need is to introduce here the jump of the acceleration of this particle which linked to the jump of the acceleration of fluid particles seen by this big particle, okay? And so that's why in the stochastic um, properties of the acceleration of these uh, particles above the Kolmogorov scale, we introduce the stochastic relaxation time. So uh, how it interacts deterministically nobody knows but there is an impulsion impulsion either as a vorticity gives uh, this impulsion or the shear gives the impulsion the fact uh, in the model is the following the reaction of this complex um, uh, uh, situation is introduced as a statistically is the um, uh, correlation, autocorrelation, and the amplitude of the intensity of this interaction, but not how it 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 it, it can be um, rotated. It can be I don't know. It can be stretched. And and by the way, my um, last part, which I um, uh, this drawn after um, conclusion, um, uh, is uh, uh, the stretching of this droplet by the Kolmogorov vertical tubes and uh, the creation of new droplets. So uh, the uh, detailed interaction is unknown, but um, uh, it is already good to introduce the effect of local structure on such kind of droplet. I don't know if I did rep uh, reply on your question. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're perfect. I, I was just wondering, is it, is it possible that the reason that you see the interaction is because when you have small scales, you necessarily have to have large scales? And what you're actually seeing is what the large scales are doing to the droplet, and that's related through the, the energy cascade to what's happening at the Kolmogorov scale? Yes, yeah, yeah, but uh, you know the the modern picture. Uh, let me let me. Um, so in fact, in fact, uh, there are now really very interesting time in the turbulence. So um, the uh, there is a cascade. Really, um, the energy, the energy um, coming from uh, large scales. You know, if you uh, put the grid, the grid, and the energy of the turbulence behind the grid is coming from the mean velocity, from the kinetic energy of the flow. But the uh, topology of the turbulence, uh, the onset of the turbulence is the uh, prerogative of the small scales. So from the very beginning, you have like Ed, uh, on the wall, you have very big gradient because of um, continuity equation. These big gradients um, uh, are communicated with large scales, with large scales gives the uh, smaller and small scales. So that means, that means that the role of small scales is very important. And this is what's shown um, uh, while the uh, cascade is Kolmogorov, but it was shown in recent DNS that at small scales, at small scales, 
there is an interaction of vortex tubes which gives the sheet, strange sheet. And then this strange sheet is interacting with another pair of vertical structures, which, which are um, collocating and which are unstable and so on and so on. So the, um, how the energy um, is transmitted on small scale, this is really very, very interesting process and uh, very complicated and very unknown at the moment. So that's why that's why we cannot uh, predict uh, and you know to make the DNS DNS with the finite uh, form. Uh, the problem is uh, you need to have the higher Reynolds number. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mikael, for for replying to this kind of short. Uh, uh, questions uh, session and uh, thanks for, for uh, giving the talk today and uh, for sharing with us so uh, many statistical models for uh, different kind of cases to, to model um, and uh, I would say let's thank our speaker again mm -hmm. and uh, uh, thank you thank for, you for having me and so I'm, I'm really very pleased to give and this talk and uh, uh, thank you very much for all people who assisted uh, uh, during this a little bit long much longer than it, is, it was permitted a little bit long talk thanks thanks once again and uh, i hope to to see you all uh, next uh, thursday and have a good evening yeah bye bye, bye. thank you <laughs>